And welcome back to Vanessa's podcast. So today I have um, another author of this book, uh, The Power Within, that will be released on May 31st. Uh, his name is Anurag Ray. And um, you can also find him on Instagram and YouTube at superhumaninu.com. So, hey, how are you there? Thanks for joining. So, tell me a little bit about your 21 day meditation challenge in the book. Um, so, the challenge is basically part of uh, this book which I'm doing. So, the book is called The Power Within. Um, and basically, the book talks about uh, how we We have been living uh, our lives in a state which is not normal, and yet it has become so normal for us. Um, we need to tap into the energy um, or the actual uh, source energy um, in order to utilize our full potential. Um, so the 21 day challenge is basically to teach people. Uh, as for the research, it takes 21 days to form a habit. And the challenge is basically to teach people uh, to form a meditation habit in those 21 days. Okay, it sounds great. I'm going to get back to that. But before we get deeper into your book and how people can get into it, I'm going to ask you a series of questions. And just for fun, and you're going to do your best to answer, okay? So let's get started. Number one, what is the first book that made you cry? So we get to know about you a little more. the stories uh, which made me emotional was uh, it's a book called You Can Win by Shiv Kera and I was reading a story in that book uh, where it explains about a guy who, who uh, a balloon man basically he was uh, on a beach and every time his sails would go down he would release a balloon and children around would uh, see the balloon and come and buy it Oh, that's so sweet. After some time, a black kid was observing him for some time, and then uh, mm -hmm. he came up to the guy and he pointed up to the black balloon and said, If you left that black balloon, would that fly too? Um, so mm -hmm. that story really touched me, and uh, that was one of the stories. Wow. Uh, yeah, I can tell it really touches you because you still remember in details. Wow. <laughs> that is so cool, huh? All right, number two, does writing energize you or exhaust you? And when I um, ask this, I mean, there's times it can be exhausting. It's a mental challenge to write. It depends what you're writing, really. But is it? does it give you energy also? By example, when you wrote this book. So I started writing. Uh, so originally when I started writing, it, it was not for the book. Uh, I just thought I would start writing my thoughts because it, took me to a different place and like I found writing very therapeutic so I uh, started writing like that and then after that uh, some people said that it was really good and I should make a book so yes it is uh, I enjoy writing and it does not exhaust me it actually like I actually feel I'm in a different energy level when I'm writing oh wow yeah. so basically yeah. the meditation and um, the part where you teach others to relax was always there with you and you were so into it that people were like oh you have to share with others that, that is true yeah so i've been practicing meditation for about 10 years now and i've seen lots of ups and downs during that time but uh, for some reason like i was always happy from inside even though the world around me was changing rapidly yeah okay number three does a big ego helps or hurts writer Does having a big ego uh, helps or hurts uh, writers? So I think having a big ego will hurt not just writers but anyone. Because um, what happens is when you have a big ego, you stop learning. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. And when you stop learning, you stop growing. And uh, which is not good for anyone, basically. That's uh, totally uh, true. You're yeah. right. You, you kind of like froze. 
And a lot of people don't realize they think they keep learning and they keep going places. You can grow and go to all these places, but if you ego is not in check and it's frozen, you're not actually absorbing any new information because you're too obsessed about your self-image, you know? Anyway. Uh, number four, have you ever had a writer's block? Uh, when you write, when you wrote this book, where you felt stuck. Yes. Uh, so I have been very busy in the last uh, one year uh, while I was also writing this book. So I uh, changed career. I started three businesses, and plus I've also um, got a five-year-old who keeps me busy. And uh, so one of the challenges for me was like I. Uh, especially if you're writing a self-help book, I feel it's the energy more than the words which affects people uh, for your book. So I just want to be in the right state of mind when I'm writing. And that's why it took me like over a year to write because I always prefer writing when I'm calm. I've just finished my meditation in the mornings. So Yeah, I totally understand because you have to be in a good headspace to be able to reflect, you know, how you're feeling. And for the readers to, you know, get that vibe too, it's really important too. So yeah, I 100% agree. So um, the number five question, if you could tell yourself as a young boy, then you could write about anything and they will sell by millions. What would it be? So I would, uh, if I, had, I got a chance to go back in time and speak to my younger self, I would advise myself to write, just start writing about the lessons I'm learning every day in life because I believe life is the best teacher and we don't realize how much we learn every day if we keep on noting everything. Um, I think that would make a good, great book. Yeah, sounds like a really good one. <laughs> okay, and the last one, like tell me more about your book and then uh, let's read a few lines of it. I talked about it a bit, uh, like when we started the call. So the power within is basically what it is. I've been practicing meditation for 10 years, but the real results only started showing in the last two years. Uh, before that, I like I was just like most people who try, who were just trying to meditate, but like some, some of these people try for some days and then give up. Um, the reason is because the way we are meditating just now, we are following... Uh, the guidelines which were made for the monks, by the monks. Mm -hmm. And we, like in today's world, we are nowhere near monks. Like we don't have that peace. We, we cannot go on a mountain and seclude ourselves. To meditate. Yeah, we so wish we, have, we could, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we have self-consenting, we have kids to look after, we have a job to attend to. So it's a totally different environment. And that's what gave me an idea to write this book because... We need a new form of meditation, uh, something which is more accustomed to today's society. So show me an example of, uh, tell me an example of uh, what's your ideal way for uh, somebody in a civilization to meditate and they, they really don't know how. Okay, so I would say, first of all, uh, that there's a big misconception among people that... Uh, you need to be thoughtless in order to meditate. So the first thing I would say is start with something like a breathing technique or visualization. Um, where you visualize or feel. It also depends on what kind of person you are. Some people are some people are good at visualizing. Some people are good at feeling. So if you are good at visualizing, you can imagine energy flowing through your body by taking attention into different parts of the body or even around your body. Uh, if you're a better feeler, then you can feel your breath, feel the sensations in your body. So the first step would be just to observe rather than to control. Yeah, that's a really good one. Just to be able to just look around and uh -huh. uh, just, you know, kind of try to zone out. For some people, it's I know it's really hard. It's, and they just can't get off of the worries. So they can't, uh, they can't seem to relax at all. So it's hard for them to just have a, like a blank mind. So what would you suggest for that? Uh, so can you repeat that again, sorry, for what kind of people? 
like uh, the people just can't stop roaring so much and they just can't empty their, their mind basically so they are finding hard to control the mind they're just thinking too much yeah yeah so i would suggest uh, to them the most important thing is to build a ritual so as long as they they have to because meditation is something which you won't see result overnight uh, it's like I like to give the example of a bamboo tree. Uh, so the Chinese bamboo tree takes five years to build roots, and in the last six months it grows ninety feet tall. So meditation is something similar to that. It will take time to build the roots, but when it starts showing the effect, uh, like you will just feel as if your life has changed overnight. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Okay. If you want to read, uh, get, go ahead and read a sample. So, I think I will go and read a chapter from my book. So, as I was explaining before, the book is uh, divided into 21 chapters, which is equivalent to 21 days, because research shows that it takes 21 days to form a habit. So, that's why I took 21 chapters. Oh. Each chapter is got like uh, me talking about the concept and or the technique, and then uh, a meditation, uh, a guided meditation after that. And then uh, an action which they can take for that day. So that's is, that's how it's divided into 21 days. So the section I'm going to read is day three, and it's called "Why Most People Fail to Meditate." So one of the biggest myths about meditation is that you need to get rid of your thoughts. Let me do an experiment with you. I'll give you next 30 seconds to close your eyes and think of a white polar bear. Okay, you can open your eyes now. But this time, I want to close your eyes again and think of anything you want as long as it's not the white polar bear. So you're free to think anything but the white polar bear. Did you think of the white polar bear at least once, maybe more times? If you're like me and many others who have done this experiment, your answer would be yes. The point is our mind and thoughts behave in a way that the more you try to control it, the difficult it gets. The mind by its very nature is designed to think and therefore it will continue to think. You have to let it be and just observe. Have you ever noticed you can continue to perform your tasks while the mind is busy thinking? This is because when you're thinking, only 1% of the mind is potentially involved in the thinking process. And so if you're sitting quietly doing nothing else, then even when there are thoughts in your mind, about 99% of your mind is silent. It's because this 1% of your brain creates a noise, the remaining 99% gets drawn to it. Hopefully you get this concept in your mind. You'll be able to take your focus off that 1% without resisting and just observing. One of the other main reasons why people do not meditate is that they are too busy. You yeah. need to realize that our brains are designed to assist us in our survival and would naturally resist any time you want to try something new. The reality is, as meditation increases our body and mind performance, we become more productive and hence create more time. Gandhi was once found quoting that, Today, we need to meditate two hours of I need to get a lot more done. Please stop telling yourself that you do not have 10 minutes in 24 hours for meditation. All it takes 10 minutes a day to notice profound impact on your body and mind. And once you start noticing these changes, you can increase the time you meditate to 20 minutes or half an hour. I meditate only 20 minutes every day, 10 minutes in the morning, soon after I wake up, and 10 minutes before I go to bed. Finally, there are some people who start meditating and then give up after a few days, thinking that it's not for them. They complain that they are not getting results or things are getting worse. Now, the way meditation works is that it starts by making you more aware in the moment. This means that you will have increased focus, more creativity and better problem-solving skills. But it also means that as you become aware, you start noticing problems quickly. And all you need to do is fix them if you can, and let them be if you can't. Don't give it too much attention. It's better if you're aware of the problem, 